Hey, it's nice to have you back here in my new video again. Today, let's talk about some great new update about the Bushman Panoramic. So I've just received this mini pot bundle designed by the Bushman Panoramic. And I believe this is perhaps the best design for the one shot 360 capture to show its full potential in a tiny little space. With the help of the mini tripod bundle, you can also put your camera in some very specific, very clever point of view. In the coming next video, not only we will learn everything about this uh, mini pot bundle designed by Bushman Panoramic, but I will also take this bundle outside in my everyday life to show you how to take the fully advantage of this bundle in your everyday life to boost your content creation with the one shot 360 camera and some great live demo section and I will take some sample footage, sample shot together with the Cook and Make It, you know. For my subscribers, you are always dreaming of my Cook and Make It tutorials, and in this video, I will share with you some latest tutorial about Cook and Make K as well. The package itself is very interesting. It is a paper box. It is fully recyclable. It's environmental friendly, actually. When you open the box, you can see a lot of interesting stuff. This one, you can see it's just so tiny, so small. It's a Bushman invisible mini selfie stick. Consists of three sections. And fully expanded, this is a Bushman super tiny invisible selfie stick. It has the same built material with the Claremont, the Monopod V2. The top design is very unique. You can always rotate freely 360 degrees. So you can always adjust your stitching line in your final shot. And on the top, you can see this is a Bushman logo. The handle is also built of high quality. And on the bottom, there's a quarter inch mount. Next one is the monkey clamp. Actually, the monkey clamp looks like an ordinary super clamp, but it is actually quite different. Do have some great customization for this uh, monkey clamp. Here you can see for the ordinary design, just only a quarter inch thread hole. But here you can see the Bushman has modify the design that has a quarter inch thread outside this monkey clamp so that you can put it under your uh, mini selfie stick or the full lens, this, the Claremont V2, the mini selfie stick. So the length of the quarter inch mount thread is around uh, 10 millimeters, it's very long and it's very stable. Once you have put your selfie stick on the top, this guy, it's a magical arm, but it's quite different from the ordinary magical arm. Uh, it has a quarter inch mount on, on the side and a quarter inch mount hole on the other side. With this unique design, you can use this magical arm as an extension magical arm for your 360 content creation. And it works harmoniously well with the monkey clamp. So they can double it as a great combo. And this one is a, a baby Popeye. It's a very tiny magnetic base with a coring thread on the top. You can see there are altogether one, two, three, four, five, six, six magnetic pins. I would rather use this uh, baby Popeye as a, a, a 360 stand together with its accordion spacer on the top because this combo set has a great friction on the surface. You can prevent your 360 camera from falling down because it has a round bottom design and with very high friction on the surface. And you can also put this bundle as a magnetic pin. I normally use the baby Popeye as a surface stand for my 360 cameras. And this is a clever use case for the Bushman Mini Pondo with a monkey clamp, magical arm, and a tiny invisible selfie stick. I can clamp on the tube and use the magical arm as a movie joint. And you can always adjust, just like a real arm with two moving joints. Adjust the angles, whatever you want. After everything is done, you can lock them up. You can lock it up. It just stays there. It's really stable. And you can put your 360 camera on the top in case you want to take your best possible shot. And don't forget, you can always rotate 360 degrees on the first section. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison of this tiny the baby monopod together with the, the monopod V2. It looks like when the tiny monopod are fully expanded, it's still a little bit shorter compared with the monopod V2. So if you do want to have an amazing point of view, 
just use that one because it's very long, but for some tiny little space, I think the tiny monopod, the tiny visible monopod works perfect. It works even better compared with this one because this tiny little design fits nicely in a super tiny little space. There is another great stuff that designed by the Bushman Panoramic, that is the compass level. It looks exactly like a quarrying space because I have a quarrying space on the right and this is a compass level. The quarrying spacer and the compass level looks pretty identical, but if you take a closer look at the bottom design, they are totally different. Uh, a compass level has an aluminum base that has a built-in compass and a leveling bubble on the left and right. With the compass level, we do have some very unique use cases. If you are an old-fashioned DOSR 360 photographer, you will know the importance of the true north in your 360 shot. Because back in the 10 years, even 20 years ago, we provide our 360 photos to, for our clients. They do want to have the precise north location so that they can build their virtual tours with exactly the right direction. Use my Google MAK to show you how to use that compass level in your everyday shooting. So it's just like you use a coding spacer, you just uh, put it on the bottom. If you place a, a compass level like this, it will be totally invisible in your final shot because it was hiding in the, this teaching area. So that is the reason why we want to use a coding spacer, you must use it like that to put it against the stitching line so that the, the dual fish line structure will capture the bubble and the compass on each one of the fisheye image. And this is also very helpful if you want to generate the virtual tours on the basis of your one shot 360 capture, but you just cannot figure out the relationship in between the frames. You can use the compass as a very good reference. I do have one more suggestion for Gerard Blondie. I do want to have a tiny little bit bigger the compass level to add an extra color checker on, the, on both sides. So that we will capture with a raw file and back in post, we can pick up the color, the middle gray, and get back the accurate color right in that environment. To make it reality, we have to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, this is a live demonstration of my use case with the Bushman Minipod bundle. You can see, I uh, tried to capture the behind the scenes movie with my DJI Pocket 2. As you can find that, uh, the, the, the moment when I get prepared, I got two new dishes, I can make my 360 shot uh, even more wonderful with the help of the, the new dishes. And they look just so delicious. Here you can see, I would like to take a closer look at the, the vegetables. And just want to share with you that I, I was so excited to enjoy the, the, the Japanese food. And here I, I try to make faces with uh, Kuka MAK and capture some uh, great content with the DNG8 capture mode. And uh, later I will use my uh, in-camera RAW Plus. And I intentionally show you that I was captured this shot with the help of the Minipod bundle. And I put my Minipod bundle on the handle and I take multiple shots in case that I didn't capture the best expression. I try to smile, I try to capture one shot one after another so every time you take a tiny little space 360 capture you had better take multiple shots and uh, in the post you can select the one that you love best sometimes uh, so something is just uh, randomly happened especially when you take photos in a tiny little space after all these shots i go to the playback gallery menu multiple select all the images we capture with the Google MAK and quickly enable this in-camera raw plus processing to make automatically stacking in the camera with the ghosting algorithm. So this is a killer feature for the camera Google MAK and every time I take my Google MAK outside, I normally enable the in-camera raw plus after all the shots. I will just leave my Google MAK outside running in camera raw plus at backstage. And after all these shots, I'm gonna go to the desktop and show you the post process workflow. Actually, it's really simple. Here I do want to share with you a little bit of my thoughts and workflow in the post process on this use case. 
you know, when you capture your shot with the mini pot bundle, it's really flexible. I mean, the orientation, the POV. You don't have to take a photo like this, a vertically up and down, straight, or vertically. With a, mi a mini pot, a bender, a monkey clamp, you can, as you can see, I've clamped this monkey clamp on the handle and take the shot like that with a slant orientation. This line is not, it's not straight. It will be curved in the final area. And that's the reason why I, I have told you that if you capture the 360 shot with flexible orientation, so to make a nadir part could be as easy as pie. You don't have to worry about that Photoshop Adobe abandon the 3D editing support because you don't have to use the 3D edit support. You don't have to purchase a finished photo or you don't have to purchase the touch retouch on your Mac. If you take a 360 shot in this orientation, your nadir part is not on the top, it's neither on the bottom. It's right in the middle of the frame and you can just get rid of the nadir part exactly like you are making a flat 2D photo editing. So come on, let's go to the live demo and I will show you, I hope you can understand my logic and methodology. Now let's go to the live demo section. In this Adobe Bridge, you can see all the raw photos being captured with the Kukam AK in the Japanese restaurant. And if you sort by the data modified, you can see the in-camera raw plus, the 60-bit high quality raw image right on the bottom of this imaging gallery. And with very simple color correct in Adobe Camera Raw, you can easily bring back the color, the details, to make it more dramatic. And later, just export in JPEG or TIFF format or whatever you want, and drag and drop into the Cookham Studio. And the Cookham Studio will automatically uh, apply the gravitational correction. If that's not, remember to click on gravitational correction to automatically correct the horizon line and export I always export with on stage panel because I will have for a single image, I will end up with three photos with a stitch result and the, the, the single fisheye with the warp effect, warp into the equal rectangular as a backup image to help me get rid of all the stitching artifacts. I've shared with you dozens of the, 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 the post process workflows, so I will skip the part and directly show you how to easily make the nadir part without 3D editing. Okay? We do have a tiny little bit of stitching artifacts caused by the optical flow stitching algorithm. But if you take a closer look at it, this is what I want to show you. As you can find, there's a monkey clamp, uh, the bender, they are the nadir part, exactly the nadir part. But you can see the whole nadir part in the equirectangular image. That is to say, you don't have to go to 3D space directly with the polygon lasso tools and to select, multi select all the nadir part. You don't have to be precise because later on we have uh, one more magic for you. Okay, so far so good. I will use the lasso polygon tools to select all of them and shift command F5, use content aware field to automatically uh, correct is this part. As you can find that we are now 80% perfect. We are now 80%. We get rid of 80%. But around this, the, the cap, we do see some little artifacts. And later on, I will, because the, the cap looks like an eclipse in the final shot, you can easily use the, the quick selection tool to select this cap. And, and later, select inverse. So now we select all of the parts except the cap and use the clone stamp tools, I mean this one, use the clone stamp tools, shortcut is S, and uh, cut, use the clone stamp to get rid of all the artifacts that are inside this part. Did you see that? Now we are 99% perfect. And later use uh, the patch tools to get rid of the artifacts that the color variation in dual fisheye lenses because in the ambient light, the light coming to the dual fisheye lenses in different direction. So sometimes it will cause a little bit flare that end up that you will see a different color variation. This is how we make the nadir part. You don't have to go to the 3D workspace. You have to bear in mind that every time you go back and forth in the 3D workspace, you project your equirectangular image into 3D space and then reproject it back into equirectangular format, go back and forth. 
in the projection conversion, you will lose a tiny little bit imaging quality every time you make a projection conversion. No matter you use a Photoshop Affinity or 10 Panel 2 VR or whatever you want, you will lose a tiny little bit imaging quality. So for the best possible quality workflow for one shot 360 capture, so theoretically speaking, stitching should be your last step. So you should have made everything the, the patch layer before you you perform the stitching at the last step. But sometimes or for most of the cases, we have to make some nadir patch after the stitching. So the last step will be the nadir patch. If you take a 360 photo like the slant orientation, we have a really flexible the distribution of the nadir part. It's in the whole nadir part will appear in the middle of the frame. So you can easily get rid of that with the patch tool, with all kinds of the tools with, within your existed for the editor. So you don't have to use 3D workspace. Just that simple and will do little harm to your final quality. And that is what I want to share with you. And that is the reason why you have to, to be smart to have to take a flexible orientation, the POV shot with 360 camera. And but that means this Bushman, this Bushman mini part bundle will really unleash a lot more potential right in behind this one shot 360 camera that will help you capture the best possible quality from your tiny little camera. Okay, to wrap up, in this video, you have learned everything you need to know about the Minipod bundle designed by Bushman Panoramic. And with the help of the Minipod bundle, I think sometimes you could just put your one shot 360 camera to anywhere, any places you want. I know the price for the Minipod bundle is not that cheap, but with the help of my video, I think you can make your own customized Minipod bundle and help you boost your content creation to the next level. I mean, the point of view is very crucial in the content creation in the 360 world. And once again, just want to give a sum up for Jaron Blondie and Bushman Panoramic for design and making such creative bundle for the 360 communities. Sometimes I think that the mini part bundle it was designed for me, for my, my muting style, right? you know? I, I always put my one shot 360 camera in all kinds of different places and to share people some amazing Result and I believe with help of the mini part bundle, there is a lot more to capture in the future. It has unleashed some of the new creative ideas in my mind, and I'm gonna share with you all the secrets in the coming next episode on my YouTube channel. So stay tuned. Until next time, bye. <laughs>